Today, I am going to be a data geek and a data sleuth. And what I want to do is I want to go through this latest study that came out in 2020, um, 2025. Looking at this study, this came out February, just like a month and a half ago. Who's a research nerd and would love to know what the latest data and research says? Research nerd, who wants data? Um, you're going to learn more about this than your doctors will as we go through this article. I promise, because uh, I guarantee none of them have read this. Uh, when you look at this particular article, it was published um, February. And in the background, it talks about like just uh, uh, defining what um, what long haul is and all that. Now, on page five, I'm going to go through some of these interesting results that came out. OK, now. What it found here, and I want to show you guys this, this is the paragraph that I really want you guys to pay attention to. So overall, 79% of the participants that were diagnosed with long haul met the diagnostic criteria for having POTS, period. Number one. Number two, an additional 15% of the part participants were, were like borderline so close. So meaning like 79% plus 15% is 94%. So if you loosen the criteria a little bit to include slightly borderline, we're looking at 94%. If you only included people who are like for sure 100%, that is 79, 80%. Now here's another interesting part of the study, okay? Which says that uh, women, there was a certain percentage of the candidates. Let me take a look. How many, what percent of the cohort were women? It was really interesting. I think it was like 80%, 70 some per odd percent, 86% were women. Let me take a look. Well, women compared to men was five to one, just so you know. And I can't find where it is at this moment. Let's see if they showed the women. Well, from what I remembered on here, at least it was in the 80s percentage. It was women to men. It was like 85.9% was women versus men. So it, a lot of these questions that come up in the past is, why do women get immune dysfunction or autoimmune issues more than men? And there's this whole perception that women are whiners and not to be believed or they don't know. And I just want to show you that the data actually, the research backs this up in that, you know, POTS is actually um, in this study, um, invariably, um, the percentage of women that got POTS as a diagnosis compared to those that fulfills that criteria versus the men was way more like five to one, five times more likely in women than it is in men. So there is absolutely true, based on research, a, bit, a total difference between the number of women that get it versus men. So it's not an accident. It's a statistical scientific fact. We even had a case study, um, Sanaya uh, um, was on about two or three weeks ago, um, and we were talking about her case where, you know, she had, she was, what, 24 years old, um, Yale student, um, planning on being um, in, in studies to be a nurse, healthcare nurse practitioner, and she only had a history of irritable bowel syndrome from young age, and then suddenly when the, bi the big C happened, guess what happened? She went into full blown uh, three years of hell with POTS symptoms. And within the, the three months prior to her meeting me, she was in the ER. Guess how many times? 16 times. Guess for what? Rapid heart rate, blood pressure changes, fainting, right? Dizziness, vertigo. This isn't a small deal. This is a big deal. And she had been, you know, at Yale, you know, and, and being a nurse, uh, training to be a nurse practitioner herself, went through all the conventional medicine route. But the thing is, Patients like Sanaya and patients like many of you here with these cardiac symptoms end up going in the emergency room, end up um, being sent, uh, being told your labs are normal, EKG is normal, or you may end up going to the cardiologist and end up with the medication uh, or being told you have salt. And that worked. We don't need to talk. The other interesting part of the study that I want to point out is this. This is what I've been saying all along. When we look at this particular paragraph here talking about um the big C, is it a trigger for dysautonomia? I love that the um, the researchers who did this study are smart enough to call POTS dysautonomia as well. And I want to point out to you that whether it's POTS or dysautonomia, we're describing the same thing, okay? Some people use the name and some doctors will use the name dysautonomia, which is more describing it. Um, it's interesting because POTS is just saying you have fast heart rate syndrome, right? Dysautonomia, it's actually a better term to describe the symptoms in terms of the fact that 
autonomic nervous system is a nervous system in your body, right? Dysautonomia means that the nerves and nervous system in your body aren't balanced. So what I want to show you is something really cool in the study that I wanted to point out. This is That's why I love the study and I wanted to share with you the latest research here. Um, well, in this section that's talking about is the big C a trigger for dysautonomia? Is that even a question? I mean, when you have 79% of individuals with long haul with it, can, can we say that there is absolutely, yes, infectious agents or super infectious agents can be a trigger for POTS? I mean, that's not a question. We already know the answer. Now, here's the really important part here I freaking love because wait, there's more. The plot thickens, okay? This section says, Generalized hypermobility and particularly hypermobile Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, EDS, is associated with POTS, listing it as fact. Now, what I want to tell you is research after research is coming out that says when people have POTS, there's also this Ehlers-Danlos syndrome, which is a really common autoimmune disorder, a dysregulation of the immune system that's for many people genetically linked as well. And so... About six months ago, another research article came out that actually says POTS is linked with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and what else? Mast cell activation and histamine intolerance, an allergy-related um, irritant of the immune system. So the plot is thickening and the research is coming out. And this is what I've said three years ago, everybody, is that POTS, number one, is an autoimmune. It's linked with autoimmunity, meaning a dysregulation of the immune system. And now that we have the big C coming in, when we have a super infectious agent like the big C, guess what? The infectious agent is infecting your body, triggering an immune response, your immune system to come up and try to fight it. But what makes it a super agent is that it is a super hyper irritant of the immune system for people who have autoimmune genetics or already have an autoimmune disease or predisposition. So, known fact, this study confirms and reiterates the study that came out six months ago is that POTS is linked with autoimmune issues. How many people knew that? And this is where we start going from people feeling being treated, uh, the medical gaslighting that's involved, which is that the medical, medical doctors don't know what POTS is. Uh, they don't know and understand long haul, right? And they certainly don't understand anything about autoimmune issues. And now what I'm here to tell you is the reason the big C and autoimmunity is so linked is because the way the VIRUS uh, attacks your body it actually is so irritating and inflammatory for the immune system that it starts to trigger. Let's say, let's say, you know, like I have mixed connective tissue disorder and I have Hashimoto's. So my autoimmune, my immune system loves to mistake my thyroid as a germ and it loves to mistake like my joints as a germ. Okay. That's a genetic and also a immune dysregulation I already have. When I got, when I got COVID and I got long haul, for example, um, those symptoms got worse. Joint pain got worse. Brain fog got worse. My hormones, um, my thyroid hormones, as well as my other hormones. And those are some of the connections that I just freaking over the last couple of years love to just clear up for everybody is to understand that the autoimmune triggers are really attacking all these different targets. And in each individual that has this autoimmune predisposition, each person's target is slightly different or very different. So there's a huge, huge link, just so you guys know, between um, between autoimmunity and POTS. And if you are needing to solve any of these autoimmune chronic health symptoms, um, or you want to just learn more about what it's like to work with us, um, you can book a call with our team. And there is a link in the chat that I have for you, as well as you can do use that QR code. The other thing is, if you want to see a replay of the POTS workshop that I just did about three weeks ago, go put POTS workshop in chat. Um, and I also have a multi-part pot, pot, multi -part POTS training series that, go, that are short video format that goes through uh, and it's delivered via email that goes through um, all these different aspects that I've just talked about. And it was a lot. I'm going to have one ask of you. If you enjoyed and you learned something from this, Help me share and raise awareness around this because it is ridiculous. Just the amount of people that have long haul, that have POTS, dysautonomia, or chronic uh, illness of any kind that are being medically gaslit. Please share with one or two other people. That'd be fantastic.